So our next speaker, Jarko Rajamaki, is the VP for Ad Operations of Rovio Entertainment. He has the advertising business unit at Rovio and is the creator, who is the creator of the globally successful Angry Birds franchise. Let's all welcome Jarko. Thank you, like you said, I'm Jarko Rajamaki and I am in charge of the advertising business at Rovio. So I, to start with, I, I can't help myself to get back to the weather advertising example Ms. Raju men mentioned because, because it's especially great to be, be here at this time of year because if it would be plus 25 and raining in Finland, I would be extremely happy to get a cold drink. <laughs> so, so my goal, goal here is, is to, to more or less tell, tell you a bit of story how you can build the biggest brand in mobile space and how you can then leverage that, that brand outside, outside mobile as well and, and how you can turn that into a media property as well. And pretty much what I we often hear in a way that, that OK Angry Birds was just Came, came up and became an overnight success, and the and rest is history. But, but unfortunately, that wasn't e actually that easy. So Ro Rovio was actually, actually established 2003, so almost 10 years ago. And the company has uh, made over 50 games before Angry Birds. And the team had a lot of lot of practice on how actually make uh, make a good game and and learning from the previous in a way not that successful games that what actually were the key things that that didn't uh, really really make it and of course when angry birds was was designed it was the first wave of touch touch, touch devices on on mobile space and of course the team then started to think that, okay, what kind of experience would be great, especially on touchscreen. So the game itself was kind of organically designed to touchscreens and not the way that many others at that time were thinking that they were just converting games that were used with, with buttons to the touch touchscreens. And, and of course on, on, on that, that moment the team gave a lot of thought to the fact that, okay, what, what are the obstacles of making a good, good game? How, how do you make it very easy to start? How do you make it you know, easy, easy to learn to play, but still very challenging to be the master? And then our head designer, Jaakko Isalo, came, came up with the idea of, of birds, and, and this is actually one of the first concept images of, of the birds that, that were ever, ever drawn. And at, at first, the, the concept of the game must be a bit different, and, and the team wasn't sure that if, if this is a good game, but from the day one, everybody loved these characters. So the team started working on, on the characters and, and what, the, what the characters could do, what kind of game play these characters could, could, could accomplish in a way that would be easy to play for, for the users, but still engaging for the audience. And of course, birds and pigs, natural combination. <laughs> and a few words on, on how, we, how we have evolved since since December 2009, when, when Angry Birds was first put to the marketplace. So my question to you guys, trick question, what is actually the most competitive marketplace in the world? If you make soft drinks, there are maybe hundreds, maybe a few thousand products out there in the market globally that you need to compete against. But what if you do mobile applications? there's actually over one million applications available on app stores right now. 
and it's growing. So there, there's a bit of competition if you, if you want to stand out in, in that crowd. But for some reason, we, we have been able to make it not only with Angry Birds that, that hit the f number one spot in the app stores, but then we launched Angry Birds Seasons that hit the number one spot in the app stores. Then came Angry Birds Rio that hit the number one spot in the app stores. Then came Angry Birds Space that hit the number one app spot in the app stores. And amazing, Alex last summer hit the number one spot in the app stores. In, in September, we launched Bad Biggies that hit the number one spot in the app stores. And lastly, we launched the Angry Birds Star Wars a few weeks ago, and that hit the number one spot in the app stores. So maybe well, we are into something. <laughs> so totally our games have been downloaded over, over one billion times at the global level, and it's still growing nicely, the number, number and, and it's still playing, even the original game is still being played a lot every, every single day by our fans. And, and, and we are truly a global phenomenon. Our audience is truly global. We have a lot of fans everywhere in, in all continent, continents. And, and it's very delighted to be here because actually the Asia is, is the fastest growing market for us. China is, is growing extremely fast. Singapore is, is number one country for us per, per penetration on the, on the devices. And, and all, the, all the emerging markets in, in Asia are, are growing, growing very fast. And, and certainly we are, we are very, very focused to Asia as well. And, and we don't see any, any reason why that wouldn't continue, because if you look at the, any market research, you can, you can see that the smartphone penetration in the, in the world is, is going, going to skyrocket, and, and probably hitting, hitting one billion next year. And as, as, as I mentioned, the, the, especially the Emerging markets are, are growing extremely fast, and, and I would say that Philippines is al also, also in this list in the top 20 countries, countries in the world. And, and a lot of, like you see, see very many, many Asian countries are, are growing extremely, extremely fast. And look at, looking how we, how we see ourselves today as a company is that, that we are pretty much an entertainment company the strong foothold, of course, is in mobile games, but, but we, have, we have also animations, we have, we have advertising, we have consumer products, we, we have book publishing, we have all, all kind of new business lines evolving around the brand that have, we have been building for, for the last three years. And, and that's pretty much that, that we think that is, is the key thing behind our success, that, that constant focus on, on the brand and, and trying to figure out different kind of ways for different types of businesses to support, support each other and, and support, support the brand. And, and the key driver for, for us has always been the fan, that how to build the brand and how to involve the fans in, in building the brand. And, and pretty much the key thing that we think every single day when we try to come up with something new is that what is there for the fans? How we can make the user experience better? How we can engage our fans better? How we can offer new content or new types of products to our fans? That's always in the center in everything we do, and everything else is secondary. We don't think a second about monetization until we get these things right. Because if you don't have fans, if you don't have audience, you won't have money. But uh, mobile gaming in general is 
is a pretty good value proposition for the, for the consumers if you compare to many other types of, of entertainment. So, so going to movies or watch a TV or, or consume console games or something is, 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 is much, much more, more expensive in, in that sense than mobile gaming. And, and, and to the direction the whole gaming industry is going that it's actually free to play. So, so the value proposition is going even, even to a more fair direction towards the consumer. And, and, and we, we like it. And in, in, in order to make the, make the games, ga games more engaging with the, with the fans, we also, all, also want to build, build kind of physical experiences and, and events around our brand and, and, and with our fans. So for example, in the Singapore Formula One, race we had a kind of crowd game in the audience where where the the audience had a big screen and they could control the, sl the power of the slingshot by 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 yelling as as, as loud as they can we have we have run run a angry bird championships in many in many countries at the moment we have a kind of designated angry bird christmas area in Changi airport in 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 singapore we had a live we had a live action Angry Birds game where we had 100 feet big 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 tall, tall structure where, where we have kind of live action Angry Birds shoot shoot those structures we, we did that kind of event in Barcelona and, and these events have been very engaging with our our fans and and then also giving their more more giving them more exposure to the brand and and getting them more engaged with our products and of course the consumer products has been the biggest growing growing area area for us for the for the last year or so and and at the moment there are probably over 30,000 different products licensed products out there in the market and, and the number is is still growing and that that part of part of the business is, is skyrocketing as well. And I remember when we first started before Christmas 2010, we started to make some plush toys and, and we just thought that, okay, let's do a couple 10,000 of those and see, see how that goes. And, and then we'll, we are launching our Christmas update about, from our seasons game and we just put our own ad there. And we sold over 100,000 of them in a few hours and ended up selling, selling millions, millions on the, on, since then. But, but also nowadays we, we see the, the most the consumer products as, as a, another touch point for our brand that can also work in the, on a, another direction. And good, exam, good example of that is that I just had a one, person starting in my team and I, I had a discussion with her and and she told me a story that that when 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 she told told her her grandmother that that she's joining Rovio and her grandmother said that okay oh, oh, what what's that what's that Rovio that I I and I, yeah that's Angry Birds oh I I oh Angry Birds these Angry Birds candies <laughs> because she wasn't playing the game but she loved Angry Bird, Bird candies. <laughs> but now she is playing the game as well. <laughs> so actually, the, the products can also work that way. That we can also also use the consumer products to get get new fans. And of course, the one one thing we also also wanna wanna do at times to to do some nice things like we did with Ethan, who was five year old guy from US who sent us a, a lot of letters and, and concept that, and, and his dream that he would like to design levels for Angry Birds. <laughs> and, and he has sent up, of course, with the help of his mother, a very, very kind of true letter stating that, okay, this is the best level he has ever, ever designed. He had <laughs> done dozens. So then we, we showed this to our designers that what do you guys, guys, what do you think? 
and tested that, okay, let's do it. So we did that. So Ethan is, is Ethan five year olds from Texas is the only, only person in the world has, ha has had his own level in Angry Birds. And the, the other, other approach that we have trying to build along the way that is very, very nicely illustrated with our Angry Birds space game launch was how to more or less integrate all the business lines and all the, all the tools that we have in ser serving more or less our, our brand. So, so we created animation videos where we told the story on how actually the birds end up in space. And, and then we, of course, had <coughs> consumer products su support the, the game. We had a huge launch event in Seattle, Space Needle, where we kind of had a, had a Angry Birds. We made a slingshot out of the Space Needle. And then one aspect in the, in the space game also wanted that we wanted to include the educational aspect to the game as well. So we partnered with National Geographic and, and NASA that and, and decided that we, together with them that, that this is a very good way of educating people about space and physics as well. And, and we put a link into the game, game itself to the to, to picture of the space station where when you tap the link to the <coughs> space station you get the link to NASA website where you can learn more about the space and, and physics. And, and then we also made a video about, about gravity with NASA as well. So take a look. Can you have a voice, please? International Space Station. We're currently about 240 nautical miles above the surface of Earth. I want to do some physics demonstrations that involve some of the things you might see in the Angry Birds game. And of course, I've got my Angry Bird here, but we need a pig. Well, I'm not very good at art. It's a good thing I decided to be a scientist and an engineer instead of an artist, because I'd, I'd probably be starving by now. OK, here, here is pig. And of course, Pig is the arch enemy of Angry Bird. And Angry Bird had some eggs. And Pig stole the eggs. And don't ask me how I got the eggs on Space Station. I've got a bungee spread across the hatchway. And this bungee is kind of like a slingshot. And I'm going to show the trajectory that Red Bird is going to have when I fire him with this orbital slingshot. Launching Red Bird into space. Well, hey, we're already in the space. Whoa, look at that. Whoa, all the way down. That's an example of a trajectory. It's a straight line from our perspective here. Gravity will attract an object if it's moving in a straight line, and it will no longer move in a straight line. It gets bent, and it goes in a curved trajectory. And guess what? Astronauts have to worry about these things, because if you're in a rocket, and say you're trying to get from one orbit and rendezvous with space station, you end up going in curved trajectories, and you need to know how to fire your rocket engines so that you can go from where you are to where you want to be. And if you understand the math, if you understand the physics, it will allow you to go out and get a neat job 
a job sort of like mine. And we got to see all of this in a weightless environment, which is what the Angry Birds space game is going to be like with gravity fields from planetary bodies. And they actually took the flash toy to the space. <laughs> so, so this is these kind of things that we we do are are our key to get the highly engaged audience. And and based on any measure, we we have we have been very successful on in in. Building, building the en engagement among the audience. And, and for example, that space clip has been viewed over 20 million times in YouTube. And all together, our, all our videos that we have posting them have received uh, almost 800 million views there. We have a lot of Facebook fans, Twitter followers, and our cross-promotion channel in our game is viewed, viewed quite a few times every day. And, and this also tells tells a story about the engagement among among the fans because we we get a lot of fun art art every single day that make makes us very very proud and, and delighted because because people do all all kind of funny funny things funny things and 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 of course nowadays it's it's so easy to share them with social media so that can also also inspire the others. And, and what, what this actually has meant to us has been that we have been able to accelerate the, our, our reach massively along the way. So at the beginning when we have Angry Birds Classic, it took quite a lot of time to get e e even 10 million, do million downloads for that game. Even that itself was a figure that we couldn't believe ourselves at that, mo at that time. But then we launched seasons, and that meant, meant fa much faster. Rio once again, much faster, and Angry Birds Space got over 10 million downloads in in barely three days. And now, when we launched Angry Birds Star Wars, it took less than two hours to hit the number one spot in the app stores. So, when we have that kind of powerful brand, very engaged audience, and a huge reach. It's natural to ask that, of course, we are a pretty powerful media property as well. And, and, and pretty, pretty much the strategy on, on that side has, has been in the whole industry that because mobile devices are are the devices that everybody is holding in their hands. It's very personal. You're using it a lot. It's starting to be more and more compelling media property to all, all publishers as well, both in the traditional media side, but also when you approach the media aspect from gaming angle, for example. And if you look at the what kind of applications people people use in, in smartphones. The gaming is actually still clearly the number one one category. And and people spend much more time playing games than, than for example in the traditional media side. And even even the social media that is everybody is using their their mobile devices nowadays is still behind behind gaming. And one interesting thing about, about Angry Birds has always been that we have 
paid a lot of attention to and effort to try to find the typical Angry Birds user, but we haven't found one because it's everybody. It's it's men men and women and all 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 age groups, all demographics are are there represented. So so we truly can pretty much reach reach everybody who is who is using their their devices. So then the, the pretty much a question from from the advertiser perspective that is is still still up in the air that okay if people spend that much time using their mobile devices why am I not spending any advertising money there and that's that's pretty pretty much that is still still reality today but but we we also are are working hard to, to change change that and, and change that view on 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 how you can how you can find find audience also through that channel. And and one of one of the ways we, we see advertising in, in mobile, we see it as an opportunity. This is a, this is an front page of a newspaper from Finland from year eighteen eighty nine. So it's all over 120 years ago. And advertising at that time was, well, they had those rectangular boxes for ads. And now what we have when we have been innovating in this industry for 130 years, well, we have those same rectangular boxes there. So maybe there's a bit of room, room for innovation in the, in the industry. Well, of course, the counter argument is that, okay, the, the banners work. And, and, and they, they work to some extent, so, so people are still using it and find it easy, easy and scalable. But still, we, we strongly think that, that there are a lot, a lot of room for for new, new, new kind of ways of introducing advertising in, in the mobile devices. And from our perspective, the key drivers in, in making the advertising better and work better in mobile is, is to, to find more integrated ways to do advertising in mobile, to find more organic concepts and formats and, and create more engaging experiences in the execution. And, and there are a lot of ways of doing that, and I, I could spend, spend a year on, on going through different kind of concepts that we have been, been working on. But there's just a few, few simple examples that, that, that I can share with you. Somebody in the audience was earlier asking about, about how you actually get to the ad from the content. And that's that's a very good question. Because because we all also think that just sticking an ad on top of content is not probably the best way of, of doing advertising because that, that's the, the point where you usually get annoyed by by the user because they're interrupted by an ad just suddenly. So for example, on all rich media executions that we do in, in our games, we have kind of build tran transition animations to the, to the games where you actually have some kind of characters or some, some other animations bringing the ad to the screen where you have a natural transition from the game experience to the ad, 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 ad advertising itself without having the interruption in the middle. And, and the most the reception that we have got for those formats that we have been running has been very, very promising. And they have been viewed by, by the fans also a lot more positive way than, than just the standard banner advertising. And, and one other example that I want to share with you is, is, is a campaign that we did with Microsoft Bing search engine, where we just put on Bing button in, in our game when you fail the level for the three, third time. So we thought that, okay, you might need some help there. So we put a button there where you 
tap on the button and you go to a predefined search query to find a walkthrough videos for that specific level. And the mo most interesting aspect of that advertising campaign was that when we actually, when the campaign ended, we got a lot of feedback to our customer support that, hey, why you removed this feature? And also when I was speaking in, in, in some events and with, with some advertising professionals, there was even a lot of advertising professionals who, who said that, oh, I, sorry, I didn't feel kind of get that, that that was an ad. I thought it was a feature. But we were, we were be able to drive over 80 million search queries to the Bing search engine through that single simple integration. And of course, the ultimate example in, in our side is, is the Angry Birds Rio game that we made in, in, in cooperation with, with 20th Century Fox. They had the movie Rio, Rio coming up and, and they had birds in the movie and we had birds so we thought that hey, pretty good fit. Let's do a, let's do a game. And, and this is an example of advertising where actually the users were paying, paying for the ad because, because the game itself is an ad for the movie, but still people were ready, ready to pay for the game. And actually, the, all the videos that we provide, produced around the game, they got much more views on YouTube than the movie trailers. And, and the, a, lot of, a lot of kind of exit poll studies indicated that uh, quite a few people ended up seeing the movie because they had played the game. And the movie ended up, up being a great box office success for, for Fox. So what's next? So pretty much how we, how we see it that our, our future is that, that we just want to keep delighting the fans and keep coming with new type of experiences to consume for, for our, our fans. And, and one of the things that we have been doing lately is, is that we have been doing some activity parks. That's a, that's a very interesting new, new business area for us. We have one, one big park in, in, in Tampere in Finland in Sarkaniemi Amusement Park where we have Angry Birds activity park section in the park. There are a few others, others in, in, in the works. And then we have also, also kind of first location-based entertainment and location-based advertising concepts on, on the works. And, and because everybody else has been talking about McDonald's, I'm mentioning that as well myself. We are at the moment running, running a campaign in China with McDonald's where you, you have a map in, in the Angry Birds game where you can see all the, all the McDonald's outlets. And when you, when you go there with your, your game, any, any McDonald's outlet, you actually get some virtual goods as a reward in the game. And another new area for, for us is that we are starting to produce animations. We have announced that we will be producing weekly short animations next year that we will be broadcasting in, in all possible screens. Because our, our strategy is to be on whatever screen our fans are using, we will be there too. And this is also our way of bridging the gap between television and mobile. Because we will be broadcasting the animations also on the TV side. And then also on the digital set channels. So that, that will be kind of a product for us that we will be promote in all screens that can ha have the broadcast content. And then, of course, you never know what the bir birds and bigs, bigs will, will come up, come up into future. And, and we certainly have a lot of, a lot of new, very exciting things on the work. So, so watch the space. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, Yarko. Uh, may I have a seat? All right.
you still have uh, paid applications, paid games? Yeah, we do. We do have. So in terms of um, if, if, if you were a developer, for example, uh, which contributes more to the revenue of, of um, just between, because I, I know you have merchandising, you have licensing and everything, just between advertising and paid applications, which is, which gives well, more they're, they're, I, I would say that they're, they're more, more both equally, equally important important part of parts of the business because because in the whole industry you you also realize that that there's always certain certain segment of of people who spend money in in applications or spend money in 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 a purchases but but through the advertising supported version of the games you also want to be able to offer Content to those people who are not not ready, to, not yet ready to spend spend money on on mobile, so we can also delight those fans. All right, great. Uh, questions, please. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Me. I'm from Fungay Studio. Um, we are a game development company. So my question is, uh, when you uh, for initially released Angry Birds in 2009. Um, what is your monetization plan for the app? Or did you um, initially plan on releasing a paid and a free version? Well, well, uh, at that time, we first launched the game in, in I iPhone on App Store because that was pretty much the mo most ready ecosystem at that point and the only, only one that were pretty much truly global at that time. Because for example, on Android side at that time, Google Android market wasn't actually available in, in many parts of the world. So, so that wasn't, was, wasn't kind of global marketplace at that time. So that's why we, we focused first on, on, on iPhone side and iTunes. Another question. Um, uh, what is your take um, on what do you rec recommend um, releasing paid apps or free apps with in-app purchase? Well, if you look at the whole market, the, the whole market is going more and more to the direction where where you actually the application itself is free, but then you, then you have when when you can prove to the consumer that the game actually is good and it's 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 kind of worth the money, then, then you can have some in-app purchase where you can monetize the game. So that's certainly where the whole, whole market is, is going more and more. Questions? Yes. Uh, what has been the evolution of your uh, paid promotion slash advertising strategy to promote the Angry Birds apps? To get it to like number one in the uh, app stores, how much of it is now you know perhaps viral and it it gets there by itself because of the brand versus in the beginning did you guys pay to promote and um, advertise? Well, that that is ver very kind of interesting interesting story from our side because because it it was very viral from the start and it started started to spread from 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 fr friend to friend and and uh, very very virally and also through the videos that we make and and the, the bits of the story that that we relived in the social media early early on so it kind of grew grew very very fast virally virally and then started to sustain sustain itself and and of course nowadays we have so much so huge fan base that that we we can we can easily when we have new New content, we can kind of reach reach our own own audience very, very very effective, effectively. Any other questions? Oh, there you go. Well, or originally our our strategy on Android has been like, like a told you that that on Android market the the payment payment mechanisms hasn't been that developed and, and that prevalent as on on iTunes side so in that sense still still today 
the better strategy on Android has been to, to go with the free version and with the ad supported model. Yes, sir. Uh, please introduce yourself. And I'm Ramon Moon Tree, working for a mobile content network. Yeah. The question I want to ask that um, comparing to a brand of Angry Bird to the other brand, for example, like uh, Hello Kitty or maybe the superhero, uh, they took so long, maybe five, ten years before developing the branding. Comparing to the Angry Bird, it takes two, three years. When we're working with the, we are trying to convince the advertiser, advertiser asking us that, how can you assure that in terms of the royal to convince the advertiser that uh, it will keep the brand for the long, long time, or maybe because of the acceleration for the past year is so fast, how can we keep the higher acceleration for the next few years? So this is a more, more or less a question from the from the advertiser. Yeah, well, well, I m myself, I I have a five year old daughter, and and she is crazy about Disney princesses, and those have been around for seventy years. And, and they are still big. And I myself, I read Donald Duck magazine. And I'm still a subscriber. And that's been around for 60 years. So I, I, don't, I don't see why when you, when you can, can once build a strong brand and, and a strong, we, we even sometimes we get a feedback from, from our fans that, we, that they have even kind of emotional attachment to, 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 to the characters in a way. So, so we see that the, we, have, we still have so much stuff that we haven't done with, with the brand and with the characters. And there's so many, many new ideas and new ways of, of introducing the, the characters in, the, in different types of gaming experiences, but also, also offline. And, and on on different types of of consumer products or different kind of experiences and and like we, I mentioned the activity parks so we, we certainly don't see see that the brand would have any any risk of of kind of going down thank you um, more questions maybe from up there here you go hello brother my name is <laughs> hello again. My name is Oliver from Marketing Magazine Philippines. I have two questions. Uh, one is how important are offline activities like your events in uh, in Singapore and your cute plush toys, which we want to have actually. <laughs> uh, uh, how important are these offline activities on sustaining the Angry Birds brand, which has been built up online? And second, what are the challenges for the number one g mobile game? now in terms of innovation? Well, uh, well of course, those, those e events and, and consumer products, that, as, as I tried to highlight, that, that we see that they all support each other. And, and also, also, like I mentioned, they, they go to the other way around, that I in some cases, it's the it's consumer products that actually support the game. Like with the space game launch, we, we launched a range of, of plus toys that contain the a special code which you could use to unlock some special content in the game. So that that is also an example where where the where the where the physical products are also driving or driving driving the fans back back to online and back to digital space. And that's the same thing that we have been doing with, with the merchandise on on Star Wars game. So I see in that sense, I, I, I see certainly see that, that all, all of those are important and, and, and they are very, very integrated together in our approach, that we don't, we don't see them as a kind of standalone, standalone silos. And my second question about how difficult it is for Angry Birds to innovate. I mean, you started with Angry Birds Classic and now you have even partnered with Star Wars. I mean, how do you plan to sustain such kind of innovations? Well, well of, of course, the designer team that we have in, in, in our, our team, they are, they are very, very thrilled to, to have the opportunity be, because, because they have, have truly the, the, all, all, the, all the possibilities in the world to, to come up with new, new storylines, new kind of experiences. Because, of course, the world, world is, is full of, of different type of ideas on, on what type of games, for example, you could do. So I, I don't see that, that, that there would be lack of different kind of ideas. The, I, I think the 
more is the challenge is the other way around that, that in our case the bar bar is set so high that that, that and, and in, our, in our our company the quality is everything that we, we we care for in in design as well so so that's the biggest challenge that how how to filter out the best and, and most brilliant ideas of, of of many many and many and many ideas that 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 our designers come up with and, and the also on what the, our fans suggest to us and and how we and what we see on on how the, what, what kind of games for example the other people in the market are doing all right any other questions you know there's an interesting tweet here about eight percent of filipinos using their mobile devices in the bathroom maybe there's a uh, coloration between angry birds and that particular data well, well, to be honest, I I think that the Filipinos are a bit too humble humble there because I've seen a similar study made made in in Euro Europe and and I would say that the result was closer to eighty. Yeah, but sixty four percent use it on bed. <laughs> uh, it's, it's with them on their bed. <laughs> well, anyway, um, any other questions? I know uh, Roview may be an indicator of the popularity of the operating systems between iOS and Android, which is the more popular platform amongst your consumers. What's what's a more popular platform, an Android or an iPhone? Well, of course, of course, at, at the moment the the Android is is growing growing the fast fa fastest fastest. But also 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 our strategy has been to be in all platforms that that our fans are. So, so we also have a game in Facebook, and on, on Facebook side, actually, Philippines is one of the biggest countries, and and we have the Grom game in online side, and on there as well, the both both online properties, Philippines is actually top ten top, top ten countries there in the world. Definitely on Facebook. That's why no one's asking questions because they're all posting <laughs> stuff on Facebook right now. Um, any other questions, please? There you go, sir. From Smart. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Rick from Smart. So I, I just want to know, in the case of uh, Angry Birds for the ad content, who controls the the ads? Is it uh, Rovio or the 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 games uh, platform like uh, Google Play or iOS, or is it delegated to an ad agency? Well, it's a bit of, bit of everything in a way. That that we, we of course in the end we can control control it by ourselves, but but we, we have our own own direct sales team who is working on on certain type of, of deals and, and then then we are working with agencies and ad networks as well, depending on a, depending on the market. So that means um, you're also able to do some targeted uh, advertising. So in the case of Philippines, for example, there can be local advertisers or yeah, brands. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Questions? Last questions? Yes, ma'am. When is when and what is the new version? Wait and see. <laughs> you mentioned location-based ad campaigns. Are you going into location-based games? Well, wait, 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 let's see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If there are no, any, no more questions? All right. Thank you. Thank Yarko. you very much. Thank you. Ram Salamat. <laughs>